What is going on? Welcome to episode 89 of the Nintendo Powercast. I'm your host, N64 Josh. Player 2 on this one, Run Jump Stomp. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, man? Thanks for having me back. Yeah, really, really glad you're here. Player 3, Super Nintendad. How's it going, my friend? How's it going? I hope I uh, don't have the busted up controller since I'm playing three. <laughs> yeah, you've got the Mad Cats. <laughs> yeah, you are you are rocking the Mad Cats. So, all right. Well, hey, that music you just heard is from On Being Human. Check them out on Spotify and YouTube. Remember, this is an unofficial Nintendo podcast. The official one is Nintendo Power Podcast. Go check them out on iTunes and wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you want to get yourself a free book from Audible, go to audibletrial.com slash NPC. Pick up Ready Player One. I just saw it this weekend. It was, it was, I really enjoyed it. I actually started listening to that again today. So I was, uh, um, I think I'm like 12 chapters in. It's good stuff. So audibletrial.com slash NPC. If you want to start your own podcast, go to podbean.com slash NPC. Sign up for free. See if it's for you. It's it's a lot of fun. Just just ask these guys. They'll tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting in a chair from OP Seat. You can go to opseat.com. Run, jump, stomp, sitting in one also. Save yourself 10 bucks by using coupon code N64JOSH. We got a couple announcements. Here we go. Hey, listen. All right, you guys can watch this show live Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific. We're a little late tonight, but, you know, technical difficulties and, and such. But we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, Twitch.tv slash N64Josh is where you will find the episodes recorded live. I am working on a new book called Another Castle coming soon. I have another podcast called the Smash Bros. Cast. On Mondays, we're playing Mario Kart as a community, and I'm streaming it. So come hang out with with us we do that at 6 p.m pacific saturday mornings is saturday morning splatoon so get some sugary cereal and come hang out while we uh while we play splatoon and we got splatfest this weekend which we'll be talking about in just a little bit and also i'm trying to get uh first look fridays going where at 6 a.m i pour a cup of coffee and we fire up some new indies from that week and uh kind of kind of check them out and that's on my twitch channel as well so there's all the good stuff out of the way RJS, you've been on here before. Actually, it's kind of cool. The three of us, I was on RJS's show with Super Nintendo. That's how I met Super Nintendo, and now we're doing it again. And it was just kind of uh, like, kind of spontaneous in the Discord this morning. It just kind of all it all came together. Unfortunately, Hate, aka your your hero, well. He, he couldn't he couldn't be here today because of uh, some some family stuff. So uh, we are going to do the Donkey Kong giveaway on Thursday. That episode will start at 6 p.m. Pacific. I am giving away uh, an eShop card, maybe two, who knows, tonight during this episode. So we will be uh, we'll be doing that near the end of the show. Now, let's get to know our uh, our, our, our guests a little bit. RJS, give us give us the elevator pitch, man. Tell us about what you do and, and who you are. Well, uh, my name's Bill. Uh, everybody calls me RJS, which is short for Run, Jump, Stomp. And uh, I, you can find my Twitch stream over at twitch.tv slash Run, Jump, Stomp. And I am the host of uh, Switchcraft, which is a three times a week uh, podcast about Nintendo. I try and keep it short. It's a solo show, so it's just me. And it's about 30 minutes, three times a week. So it's about the same length as most other podcasts. I just split it up. And, you know, the advantage of that is I never have to go too long before I get to talk about something new that happened. I love it. I love it. I, I've been trying to tune in at work when I can, when you go when you go live on Twitch, when it works out. So I even joined you, like, out of the blue on your stream the other day. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you're like, hey, turn your face cam on. I'm like, bro, I am covered in sawdust right now. This is not, <laughs> nobody wants that. <laughs> so, uh, Super Nintendo, tell us, uh, tell us about you, man, and what, what you do. Yeah, well, uh, I stream sometimes at super twitch.com or TV slash Super Nintendo. Um, I'm working on starting my own Nintendo podcast, but I haven't started it yet. And, uh, I'm in the middle of writing a children's book. So that takes up most of my time. All right. All right. I'm excited to I'm excited to check that out. So, well, uh, Super Nintendo, what have you been playing this last week? 
what haven't I been playing? I've actually been playing a lot of Splatoon and then some uh, Rocket League. Um, I'll be honest, mainly I've been playing just God of War. So <laughs> Wrong show, man. <laughs> Wrong show, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's for the Sony Powercast. Yeah, the Sony Powercast, right? <laughs> <laughs> RJS, how about you? What have you been playing? Uh, a couple of uh, indie titles for the Switch. I've been playing uh, a, a little Metroidvania game called, well, a Metroidvania roguelike called A Robot Named Fight, which I really have been, have been enjoying. Um, a side-scrolling uh, beat-em-up that uh, very reminiscent of Streets of Rage and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and that was uh, Streets of Red, which is another fantastic indie game. And um, uh, then uh, the third game that I've probably played the most this week has been Break for Assist Battle, which is a uh, a breakout clone where you are everything is breakfast uh, themed and uh, it's got co op um, co op breakout, which is awesome and it's really really fun. Oh, that's awesome! Very cool, very cool. I have uh, I've played a little bit a little bit of a robot named Fight, a uh, little bit of The Way Remastered. Which is which is pretty cool. We'll, we'll get into these later too. A um, little bit of a uh, little bit of South Park. Not much though. <laughs> I think I think I keep turning the game off during the tutorial, and I keep having to start over. <laughs> so <laughs> one of these days, I'll actually make it all the way through the tutorial. Uh, What's the name of that game again? Uh, it's uh, let's see. I was just gonna call it F. Uh, FBW, I think South Park uh, FBW. Is that does that work? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh! So uh, a little bit of that, of course. Mario Kart, uh, Splatoon. I played some uh, Lightfall today, which was which is r really quite fun, and uh, I, there's a lot of potential with that one. So um, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a busy week, busy 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 week. So. Uh, we have a lot of news and stuff to talk about, so let's jump into it. All right, so did either of you guys get to watch the Splatoon uh, US and Canada Inkling Open finals on Saturday? I didn't get to watch it, but uh, like I caught like five minutes of it, and then I had something that I had to do, so I didn't get to uh, watch mu very much of it. Okay. Super Nintendo, did. did you get to see any of it? I was working Saturday, so I didn't get a chance to watch any of it. Okay. Did you watch it, Josh? I, I did watch some of it. Yeah, I wasn't able to just watch the whole thing, but I, I watched a little bit of it, and I got to tell you, like any time you can see high-level uh, – like pro players going at it it's it's just exciting it's fun to watch and it's really it's really cool to see that we're seeing nintendo games as esports i mean i know smash has been in the scene for 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 quite some time but that and 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 the history of that is awesome but this is like nintendo getting behind stuff you know and it just it it doesn't it doesn't seem like nintendo which i think that's one of the reasons i really i really really like it so uh, set to destroy is where your winners that will be going to E3 and playing in the world championships. So if, uh, if you are wanting to watch any of it, the entire, uh, I think it's an 11 hour stream. <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can watch if you want. Uh, otherwise you can just kind of catch some highlights, maybe watch the, the finals and, uh, I'll try to include a link to that in the show notes, which you'll find at n64josh.com slash npc89. Speaking of Splatoon, how do you guys feel about this upcoming Splatfest this weekend, which is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Raph versus Leo. RJS, what do you think? Uh, Leo. Without Team Leo. Doubt, Leo is way better than Raph. Oh uh, wow! But he's he's not going to win overall. But this weekend he's going to win. Uh, I I think that this is awesome. And, and Nintendo, they should be doing this stuff with more of their games, uh, where they bring in something to have us fight about because it's just so cool. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I'm 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 pretty stoked too. Uh, Super Nintendo. How about you? Is it Raph or Leo? It's definitely Leo because um, I've got two favorite colors. One's bubblegum pink. The other one is Leonardo blue. So I'm going to just have to go ahead and go with Leonardo. 
Josh. Yeah, what that, about you, man? Th- that pink turtle, she was only in that live action. Uh... <laughs> 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 nobody nobody talks about that show, right? Yeah, uh, I'm I don't Team think Leo. She'll be in it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the second movie, yes. Uh, I went Team Leo. I actually like both Raph and Leo probably about the same, but my reasoning, my very first Ninja Turtle action figure was Leonardo. I love the katanas. I love the color blue. So I went Team Leo on this one. And uh, I looked at my friends list. at When I looked at it earlier today, it was 33 Raph, 29 Leo. So, um, wow. yeah, yeah. But uh, so it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'm, I love these Splatfests. I, I, I wish they would do them more often. Like, I, I, it's, they just seem like more fun than doing just normal turf war, you know? So They should make it last more than a weekend. Like, it should be a week of this nonsense instead of two days. Yeah, that would, that would be nice. That would be nice. And the, the other thing that's cool with this one is that the next Splatfest is then Donnie versus Mikey. And then... I believe it's going to follow. Then there's going to be, we're going to crown a winner here. It's either going to be, you know, Mikey versus whoever ends up winning, you know, is what we're going to, we're going to get th- three Ninja Turtle splat fests, which I mean, Hey, this is Nickelodeon's taking advantage of getting some, yeah. some advertising with, uh, with Nintendo and, and vice versa. I'm sure there's commercials running constantly for this show and talking about splat fest. So it's, it's, uh, it's just getting, getting their name out there uh, did you guys see the animation for the new turtle show i didn't see any of the animation but i did see like the art style and i think the art style looks really good but i didn't see it in motion yet what's it look like yeah that's all i meant was just the just the uh just the art style it's just it's pretty different than i mean you guys probably remember watching the original cartoon that they look kind of just like looked all bubbly and happy all the time. And they're, yeah. they're, they're definitely a little more, more gritty. What's interesting is Raph doesn't have his size and Leo only has one sword based on the, the pictures that they're showing us uh, for the splat fest. So um, it, it, yeah, it is, it is different. Did you, did you see the artwork at all? Nintendo? Yeah. I thought it was atrocious and <laughs> <laughs> Please don't go back. So, no, it, it's, uh, it looks better than the new movies, but I guess it's just because I like the original. Yeah. Did you ever um, read the comics back in the day, like the original comics? Like the black and white ones? Yeah. Yeah. Th- those those were pretty it gritty. Until what? after I watched the cartoon. Oh, I see. You went back to it. I wanted to consume everything Ninja Turtles. <laughs> right. I like love the Ninja Turtles, and then I had two boys. I was all excited to show it to them, and they hate it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I told my son, I said, hey, you know, there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing coming up uh, for a Splatfest. And he goes, yeah, I won't play that. I don't care about the Ninja Turtles. And I was I was just like, wow, <laughs> oh, <dude>. my heart. <laughs> <laughs> See, it, my boys are like 15 and 17, so I understand why they don't care at this point. But if, if they were like 10 or whatever, I'd be like, no, why? Why are you? What do you mean? <laughs> So, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the, the, the blue and, uh, blue and red ink, you know, just seeing, and the levels that they always end up, I can't remember the name of that. Like there's like the space station or whatever that they end up using or whatever it's called. And it's, uh, I love the different, like, you know, the one time they had these like giant, uh, the, the big, like almost like cages that would fall down in place and you were, you had to have that area filled out before the time ran out. Otherwise you weren't getting back in there unless, you know, unless maybe there was uh, uh, I can't remember one of those abilities where you can like spawn on the little, little spawn satellite things that I always shoot. I don't even know the name of them because I never use them. I know it just ends up 85 all the time, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, Splatfest, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that team Leo. All right, chat. I saw a few people saying team, team Raph, team Leo. Well, what about the end after all of it's said and done who's going to be the ultimate winner beacons kirby says thank you kirby um and shifty stations who is the ultimate winner i mean to me it's it's going to be leo right but what about you are you uh, who who what's your who donatello. is your favorite donatello is your favorite dude i'm a scientist okay donatello yeah there you go <laughs> nintendo how about you uh, leonardo i don't know if donatello will even be able to beat michelangelo it's the 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 party dude right (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah 
uh, here's for me i rank them like this leo raf donnie mikey that's how that's 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 the way i rank the turtles so um you know upper rock steady yeah yeah well there, yeah there you go <laughs> toka and razor does anybody ever talk about that so <laughs> the pink turtle yeah the pink turtle that's right the pink turtle that was like the power rangers ripoff yes. show oh so bad. pink turtle or vanilla ice yes <laughs> <laughs> all right well this this is uh i don't even know how to like segue to this the u.s internal trade commission will be taking a closer look at the switch and and may block imports due to copyright infringement now this title is definitely like clickbaity for sure but Apparently, there is a company that is claiming the Switch is infringing on their, their copyright with the removable controllers. And so, I mean, at the end of the day, I think we know how this will play out. Nintendo will pay a settlement and and everything will probably be fine. Or they will win in court and there will be nothing. But just this initial headline kind of was a, was a little bit shocking to read. And, and we they... The the ITC might even say, just get this out of here. It's not even, you know, it's not even anything. But they are apparently looking at it uh, a little closer. RJS, did you see this earlier today? Well, actually, this story's been around for quite a long time. Game Vice, uh, they made this weird contraption. It was like a big U, and you would slap your smartphone into it, and it would allow you to use... Uh, you know, more traditional controls with a smartphone. And when the Switch first came out, Game Vice sued Nintendo. And um, I don't know where it went with that. You know how, you know, these kind of legal proceedings, they take forever. Oh, yeah. And I guess this is just the next step is that the, uh, the, the U.S. ITC, they basically said, okay, we've heard the arguments. We're going to look into it. And the reason that the clickbaity article says something like um, is going to consider blocking imports because is because that's what Game Vice is requesting. They're saying, we want you to block the imports of the Nintendo Switch. ITC is saying, all right, well, we'll look at it. Mm. But that doesn't mean we're really any closer to this happening. Um, in the end, you know, I looked at the patent a million years ago, and I'm certainly no patent lawyer. But I was like, I don't know, Nintendo's stuff seems different enough from from the the weird little you thing that Game Vice was suing about. But then again, I'm not a patent lawyer. So I, 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 I'm with you. I don't think it'll happen. But, uh, you know, I really hope not anyway. <laughs> yeah, I definitely hope not. Uh, Super Nintendo, had you seen anything about this? I, I saw this thing that... Um, that... Uh... A couple months ago, I get well. Maybe it was around the, I guess, the launch. About with the um. So, but this usually, like you said, Josh, this happens a lot, and then they go to court, and it takes years, and then we don't hear about it, or we do hear that Nintendo won or settled out of court. Yeah, I think it was like even a year ago maybe a little bit, you know, maybe a year and six months, we heard about like we lawsuits that were finally getting, getting settled or, you know, getting, finding out who, who won. I think Nintendo had to pay out for some, for some patents in the Wii U or the Wii remote, you know? So, I mean, these things definitely, definitely take forever. Um, and again, I mean, you know, you read the title and it's like, Oh, I gotta click this. What? It's it's just complete clickbait. But uh, it is it is an interesting talking point for sure. Just I mean, if that if that were to actually happen, like that that would be it would be pretty detrimental <laughs> to uh, to Nintendo. I wonder what I mean. Would they end up putting out a Switch that doesn't have removable Joy Cons at this point, or what? Like, what do you guys think I they think, would do? I think what would really what would eventually happen is. You know, Game Vice is saying, uh, we want you to block imports, you know, just to, you know, they're kind of being the tough guy. Mm -hmm. And then let's say that the worst case scenario is that Nintendo loses this uh, legal battle. What will end up happening is that Nintendo will just settle and they'll say, all right, well, we're going to give you X dollars for every Switch we sell. 
and Game Vice will be like, yay, us, it pays to be a patent troll. So right. uh, in the end, this isn't going to have any real impact on the Switch coming to the U.S., and I don't think that... I don't think that the U.S. would let that happen anyway because, you know, that's that's jobs here in the U.S. that get made by selling stuff over here. You know, people are selling this stuff in retail outlets and, and things like that, and uh, that's, that's American jobs. So I, I don't see this actually going anywhere other than, at worst, Nintendo has to pay game vice. Yeah, Nightcrawler in chat says this is a do-nothing lawsuit to get attention. And uh, I do have to point out that the OG Nate Dog says, you got the cons, man? Like, like the Joy-Cons will be this <laughs> rare commodity. <laughs> Are you selling me a Switch that has removable Joy-Cons? So, all right. Well, we are finally going to learn more about uh, Nintendo's online service in May. I cannot wait. Let's... By, by a show of hands, do you guys think we're going to find out about voice chat? <laughs> I think we already know about voice chat. No, stop, stop. So you heard about Astro working with Nintendo to make headsets, right? No, I must have missed that one. Yeah, so, so Astro and Nintendo are working together to put out headsets. Now, things that we do know with the recent updates and whatnot that... Uh, you can plug in like a wireless headset that has the USB like dongle. Right. So mm -hmm. my hope, and again, it's just a hope. There's not, this is not anything confirmed, but my hope is that um, Astro will be able to, I, and again, I don't even know if it's possible, but get the voice chat thing to help Nintendo out with this thing. And we're actually going to see Astro branded headsets. Um, I'm not wearing mine right now, but the, um, the little tags that you can put on the sides of Astros I've seen, they have just right now they have just eight bit Nintendo ones like Mario Zelda. Um, I think it's a couple Mario's and then, and then Zelda. And they look, they look really cool. That gets me excited, but fingers crossed that like we actually get real voice chat without all of those cables to the phone <laughs> what would you, you guys saying that you that you think it's going to be on the switch itself that's that's my that's my hope see and... i don't think nintendo's having trouble doing that i think that they have they have uh well i mean maybe the old guard uh, has a what's not an affinity but like the opposite of an affinity like that the that they find it repulsive or something that they don't they're like no yeah, we know how to do this. We're just not going to do it because it's against our our way of doing things. Mm. Now, we don't know if that's going to continue with, you know, Furukawa coming in. Uh, but I don't see Nintendo changing it unless Mr. Furukawa is, you know, he, he comes in and starts swinging a bat around and saying, we're going to be doing things my way now. Yeah, so so part of the reason that I brought up the... the um the wireless dongle because a lot of people are like the, the little USB uh, uh, dongle is that it could also, people have used these things with the switch undocked by just using USB C adapters. Cause there's already headsets that work. And so a lot, a lot of it is, is a lot of the arguments I hear are that y you can't do it when it's undocked. That's the issue, right? You can't have the voice chat unless right now, let me, let me back up. With the app, you can if you're running all your cables into your phone and into your headsets and all that other mumbo-jumbo, right? It's kind, of a, it's kind of a fiasco. But Spaghetti wars. Yeah. So if, if, if Astro can release this headset that allows this USB-C and normal USB-C adapter so that you can run wireless headphones, the next, like, I'm hoping the next logical step is to add voice chat. Now, the other thing with voice chat is what it does is it cuts down on your, um, it eats up bandwidth. So you, you have a greater chance for lag as well. So that's, that's part of the reason they said they've used this app either way. I hope they just come up with something that's better. We typically use the chats. I'll say in discord, discord, discord. Yeah, we, we all use discord. It's, it's fine. But what's funny about discord is a lot of people are using their phone for discord and I can hear every notification they get because their phone vibrates. 
<laughs> and so, so then, uh, then, then, then I hear that. And Discord just teamed up with Xbox, you know. And Discord has reached out to Nintendo and said, "Hey, we'll, we'll let's, uh, let's work together." But uh, I don't know, Super Nintendo. What do you think about this stuff? Um, a lot of people are saying Discord, but the thing about. Like when I'm on Xbox, I normally I'll just get into the party chat because it's a lot easier than getting on the computer. If they made it easy to do it on the Switch, I would probably just use the Switch to do it. Um, I used the chat app on on my phone once just to see what it was like. <laughs> and I mean, That's... lots of online games and there's only one game that uses the chat still, isn't there? Yeah, it's still just Splatoon. Yeah, and Splatoon. according to the devs with that did Payday, Nintendo's the one that's dragged their feet that won't give them the ability to put their game on there to do to do voice chat, which that game needs it. Like, y you have to be able to coordinate with your with your teammates. So, um, I, you know, I it's it's one of those things. It's it's like the back the save backups right and and voice chat are like the and cloud saves are like the things that I just hear constantly so but um we, we've been hearing that constantly for years though i mean right. not the cloud saves the cloud saves has been since uh the switch but uh we've been hearing people clamor for voice chat on a nintendo platform for i mean ever since xbox the the og xbox with the big ass or, sorry big old duke controller like that big honking controller with the black and white buttons yeah like they had voice chat back then and people were like can we get some voice chat on our nintendo stuff and they were like nope because they don't <laughs> want us to talk to each other and, well, don't forget don't forget we had voice chat on the wii you just had to plug that thing into the back of the wii and stick it on your television and just yell at your television and then you're the, the <laughs> speak the, <laughs> we speak there's also right? voice <laughs> there was also voice chat on the original DS and there's some voice chat in some games on the 3DS. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, they always go about it. So strange. Remember Mario Kart on the Wii U. Hey, you can talk in the lobby, but you can't talk when you're racing. No, t no talking when you're racing and, and, and smash. I don't know. I think it might be the same thing. You can talk in the lobby because I've been playing a lot of smash lately and the Z button toggles your chat on and off. But I'm pretty sure when you're actually when you're actually fighting, nope, no, uh, no, no talking. So, very, very strange like decisions. Yeah. yeah. Also, I think that Nintendo likes the idea of us having this app on our phone because then they can push notifications to us. Like one of their most brilliant marketing moves that they ever did uh, came from the Wii U, which is a weird thing for me to say. And that's how that little thing would light up when they wanted to tell you about some game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Freaked and me out the first time now, it happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now we've got it on our phones. We can carry our phone around with us, and it can go, hey, hey, there's a new Donkey Kong game out. You want to pick right. it up? You want to pick it up? And why aren't they doing that now? Like, they, this could be a gateway for them. And I think that's their ultimate goal, is for them to use this. And for those of you listening to the audio, I'm holding up my phone with the Nintendo app. Uh, for them to use that in order to market directly to us. Do you guys know how I know RJS is a podcaster? He just gave us the perfect segue to the next topic. That's Nintendo's next president plans to make their mobile division a $900 million business. He wants to, uh, he, he really wants to go forward with mobile. When I hear that initially, it doesn't get me super excited. Uh, RJS, what do you think about that? Well, there's a quote from this story. In this quote, it really scares the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Furukawa, uh, he said, from what I can see, uh, well, he said that we want to turn, uh, turn our mobile offerings into 100 billion yen, which is $900 million uh, business. And then he says, from what I can see, smartphone games are the ones I want to expand the most. Mm. And that just makes me want to take my phone and throw it because 
that's not what people, that's not what we want. No. Oh, I hate this story so much. <laughs> I'm buying a flip phone. That's it. And I'm I'm letting <laughs> Nintendo know. I'm going to tweet them from my computer that I'm I'm only using a flip phone now. So it's their fault. It's it's their fault. Nightcrawler <laughs> says. Take a picture of your flip phone with a disposable camera and scan that picture in when you get it back. <laughs> there we go. I'll take it with the Game Boy camera. We'll just we'll just keep it we'll keep it all Nintendo yeah. here. So Nightcrawler says Pocket Camp, pay for your stuff. <laughs> Fire Emblem is making making money and I mean and he looks at uh, he looks at Pokemon Go. You know, Pokemon Go has been has been very successful and they're they're gonna keep on 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 moving forward with that and so i mean it's uh you know i just that just seems it seems to me and maybe i don't really have a pulse on things when it comes to 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 phone games but like do people like is that where people are like uh, i guess my kids maybe pick up their phone more than they pick up their their ds at this point you know maybe it's yeah, but they're talking to other people they're not they're not playing a game on it and if they are they're usually not paying money for it it's the whales yeah maybe nintendo's gonna make like their own version of snapchat and just get every kid putting mario filters on um so... well they would never do that because you know <laughs> the, the the same thing like what was the thing that they removed from the ds where people were drawing wings <laughs> oh the the, the uh, flip note flip note yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're never gonna do that <laughs> they won't let us talk to each other that's true <laughs> that's true so yeah um well there's they on um, they uh just added was it loot boxes of sorts on to animal crossing yep and uh i think it was epic that said like fortnite makes like 25 million or 5 million a day on just on ios alone uh, um so maybe we'll get splatoon on oops. on ios and you can just buy outfits with real money hey they got the uh they got the they got the motion controls they can you know we uh, just i don't want that yeah. i don't want it no. but i mean we got mario kart coming who knows maybe mario kart will blow us away mario kart tour maybe it'll be maybe it'll be super awesome but i'm we'll get punch out no one knows uh, but well punch out would work go ahead josh yeah, Punch Out would work. That would be a great phone game because it's like you just got to move left and right and then and then throw your left and right punches, you know. But what what were you thinking, mm -hmm. RJS? Well, uh, Nintendo has tried to monetize mobile and uh, Mr. Kimishima, the current president of Nintendo until June 28th, uh, he said that it, they're not meeting their profit uh, the profits that they want. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not getting the profits that they want. And it's because of the customers, they don't want the right stuff. And it drives me bananas. Like Nintendo started with Super Mario Run. They put that out. They said $10, you pay for the game, you get the whole game, and we'll never charge you another dime. And the customers gave that horrible ratings and didn't bother to pay for it because they they can't be bothered to pay ten dollars for a video game that somebody put a lot of hard work into because they just want to be nickel and dime to death whereas you know fire emblem heroes they're making money hand over fist because they are the you know the customers are saying yeah i want to make uh twelve nine dollar and 99 cent purchases this year on fire emblem warriors so that uh, I can get the characters that I want, um, but they won't pay $10 for Super Mario Run. I just don't understand the logic of the people who um, rate Super Mario Run as the, as a pile of garbage, and Fire Emblem Warriors is amazing. And I'm not talking about the gameplay. I'm just talking about the value for dollar, and I know that you can play these games without paying a dime. A, a dime. I know that you can, mm -hmm. but like if we would pay Nintendo for good games on mobile, then Nintendo would give us good games on mobile. So I really, I don't blame Nintendo for this. I blame the customer. Yeah. It's the way it's, there's a weird mentality with, and, 
And I'd be curious to see like the demographics and the kind of the breakdowns on who is spending money on mobile games versus who isn't and like the age groups and stuff. Because I know that I have family members who have spent thousands of dollars in a month on Candy Crush. Like I'm not exaggerating. Like they got their bill at the end of the month. They're like, I spent a thousand dollars on this just so I could have another turn to keep playing. Right. And then Nintendo releases a similar Pokemon Candy Crush on the DS where you have to buy moves just the same way or wait for your your time. I don't think it did very well. I never heard anything about numbers on any of those games. But that kind of stuff, like that move right there makes me nervous. Are we going to see a Pokemon Candy Crush on a phone? That it's like, what are you doing to the Pokemon brand at that point when you're, it, it's it's almost like they're whoring it out. And I don't want to see that kind of stuff happen, you know. And again, it's just speculation at this point. But I, I think, I don't, I think you're absolutely right. Like nobody, I hear so many people say, I'm not paying 10 bucks for Mario Run. Like I paid 10 bucks. I played all the way through it. I was like, hey, that was a cool little Mario experience. They keep updating it. I'll pick it up from time to time. I don't sit and play mobile games. I, I talk about this on here regularly. I play uh, Pokemon Go every day. I capture one Pokemon and I <laughs> take over one gym on my way to work because there's only me and one other guy that do it. So I make about uh, anywhere from three to five dollars a week in Pokemon, like the the actual gold because of the way nobody uses this certain gym. And then Fire Emblem, I log in daily. I collect my orbs and I and I log back out. And I have almost 700 orbs right now, which is, a, which is a ton. So if I ever really want to get into that game, I'm set up. I wouldn't ever have to spend, uh, spend a dime. But I can't, I mean, I could if I wanted to, right? So that, that doesn't bother me. Then we talked about Animal Crossing and it was like, they've, they've changed, they made it to where you could kind of do everything for free if you really were grinding. But now they've, they've set it up to where you need, you, you pretty much need to pay and it's a gamble when you pay, I went in and I bought all, I used all of the, the leaf tickets I had and I got like four duplicate items and I'm like, I'm not going to go spend more. I'm not going to spend actual money to try to get these like, so I can display a DS, but I got three of the same DS. Like it's, it's a uh, good business. I'm doing finger quotes, but like that turned me off. Whereas if it was like, if I'm going to spend this and I, and I can't, I'm guaranteed to not get duplicates. I, you know, I'd be a little more ready to pay to pay the money. But like my wife who plays that game regularly, she doesn't want to she doesn't want to spend anything on it. She's like, I'm going to be up. She's like, she's I mean, I'm exaggerating, but she's like, if I'm up in the middle of the night and I see all my animals are about to move, I'll go and do my little daily stuff with them or whatever. And then and then go back to sleep. I'm like, you're a crazy person. But, you know, she's she's into it. So Super Nintendo, what do you think? What do you think about all this stuff? You uh, you like uh, you um, like mobile games? You play a lot of them. Play a lot of them. I I don't mind paying, like, uh, for a game if it's if I hear it's good. Um, but uh, a lot of people seem to. I don't think Nintendo's going to release another game on iOS that isn't free. They're probably going to release a lot of free games and then just. Like, I don't even know how they're going to monetize. I'm sure they'll find a way. Yeah. Life yes, will always find a way. <laughs> yes. If you want to <laughs> do another race, you're going to have to get some more gas. or Yeah, tires. air in the tires. What are we? Are they, are they going EA now? Like, what? <laughs> it's, it's like Madden. The DLC is the air for the football. Like, <laughs> or oh. a blue shell. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy a blue shell for, for $2.99. Patriots so. didn't pay that. <laughs> so who i mean uh, who knows what that means as long as it doesn't like hey that's fine take some of this this sweet switch money you're making and 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 do a little bit with mobile but don't like let's not make that the main focus of nintendo nintendo's about that console experience and it needs to it needs to stay that way in in, in my mind so um speaking of console experience oh go ahead Sorry, I really cut off your transition, but I was going to say, it, if as long as Nintendo still uses the mobile games to prop up their I'm releasing on the Switch, that would be good. It, if they're just going to release games on the Switch and then or on iOS, and just because they know they'll make money, 
then that's another story. Yeah, I mean, if it's quality content, I don't, I don't mind paying for it. I think that's the bottom line, right? And so, that it's I just, agree. It, it just needs to be quality. So somebody says Waluigi mobile game. That's what we need. That is what this world needs. It needs I more Waluigi. I have the Waluigi mobile game for you. Oh, are you ready? Yeah, pitch this thing. It's a bowling game where you're not actually bowling. You're running a bowling alley. And <laughs> Waluigi is running the bowling alley, and it's called Waluigi Lanes. Oh, my goodness. And it's free, Nintendo. Yeah, I would I would pay to <laughs> bowl extra. <laughs> Just if, if I I'll, – I'll do it. Let's go. Let's go. I'll buy tickets for that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mega Man 2 and Mega Man X are getting limited edition carts that play – on the NES, the Mega Man 2 will play on the NES, and uh, X will play on the Super Nintendo. These things look gorgeous. Did you guys get a chance to take a look at these? Nintendo? I did. You? I got yeah. it. Yeah? Did you? Yeah, yeah. I saw they look. I saw they looked really nice, and then I saw they were $100, and then I stopped looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> RGS, what do you, what'd you think? think? Well, I'll answer your question in just a second. Do you guys think that people who buy these, I mean, I know that Josh is the kind of person that keeps his amiibos in glass boxes, you know. <laughs> uh, do you think the people who are going to buy these things are ever going to put them into the device that they would be used on? No, they're just going to put them up on a shelf. These are cool, but if you want to play these games on the original, just go to eBay or something. I, that's how I feel about it. I, but on the other hand, they look fantastic. I really like that it has a blue, like the the Mega Man Two cartridge has like this cool blue tint to it. Yes. And the Mega Man X One has like a white tint to it, and it looks just it looks fantastic. I think they're great. But a hundred dollars, my God, man! How many did you order, Josh? Uh, just four of each. No big deal. Um, no. No, none. And uh, it, it's the kind of thing like the, looking at some of the pictures and stuff right on the website. And I'll have a link to this in the show notes so you guys can check it out. But like to just keep these things close, like in their package and not you're almost missing out on some of like there's really cool inserts and like just some cool looking artwork and things like that. That would that would almost be a shame to to not take out and display so um i'm i'm actually probably gonna gonna pass on these but i think it's cool that they're that they're doing stuff like this i mean i i agree the blue plastic and the uh the white plastic are are, are really 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 nice looking so and i'm i mean Mega Man x is probably one of my favorite Mega Man games it's the the one i played the most so um i don't know isn't father's day coming maybe i'll maybe i'll, <laughs> I'll work that angle who knows <laughs> <laughs> It's a ways off. Maybe for Mother's Day. That one's yeah, there we go. Hey, get, honey. Here her, you go. I'll get it for my wife for Mother's Day. She'll love it. She's a gamer. No, I returned the scale and I got you this. Oh. oh, oh, oh. That's not a good idea. That's all of that is bad Mother's idea. So, all right. Well, hey, let's uh, let's jump into our uh, our reviews and impressions segment. All right, so we talked a little bit about some of the games you've been playing recently. You played a robot named Fight, RJS. I've been playing that as well. Can you tell me, like, did you have much info on this game before you started playing it, or did you kind of go into it blind and were kind of figuring it out as you went? Because that's what I did. I went, well, I went in mostly blind. I had seen, like, some video footage, and I said, oh, looks like a Metroid game. Uh, I just reach out to the developer and see if I can get a copy. And they sent me a copy and I started playing it. And I was like, you know, as I was playing it, I was like, wait a second. Every time I pause the game, it says seed on the bottom. And it took me a little while to realize that, oh man, this is a, this game is you die once you're done. You know, there, there's no, well, that's not true. There are saves in the game, but you die once and you're done. And, uh, Every time you play, it's a brand new world, and I just I love roguelike games. So I had so much fun playing this game. I did a stream of it the other day on, on my Twitch stream, 
and uh, I'm a big fan of a robot named Fight. I, I was I was pretty impressed myself. Uh, Nintendo, did you see this game or get a chance to play it at all? I haven't played it, but I have. Uh, I I saw some videos of it. The one question I have about it being different every time you go in does that mess you up being a uh, sort of like a Metroid type game, but then every time you go, the map is different. Does that mess you up at all, or how do you feel about that? I. Th- so at first, I didn't know this was a, a roguelike. Like, it's literally 6 in the morning. <laughs> I enter the code. I'm drinking coffee. And I'm like, there's got to be a save point at some... Like, are we, we going to get a save point here? What's what's going on? I was I was very confused. And then I died and came back in, a, in an area that looks similar. So I was like, okay, it just takes you back to the beginning. Then I died again and came back to a completely different area, different power-ups. And I'm like... Maybe this is maybe this is a roguelike, and so um, I, I had to look into it a little bit more. It totally works for me because the way it is is you can like you can play this game for like uh, like fifteen minutes or like forty minutes or an hour and 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 beat it, but then you can jump right back in and do it again. There's going to be different power ups along the way. There's different achievements to unlock along the way. It is a it is a Super Metroid like it is just a love letter to Super Metroid like there is so much Super Metroid in this thing, and uh, and and I love that about it. The enemies are super gross, <laughs> like they're literally oh, yeah, they just are. just they're vomiting meat. across the room. <laughs> yeah, just... Disgusting, and the sound. Oh my god, the sound design in this game <laughs> is so disgusting. Yes. They've done a they've done a great job on it. <laughs> yeah, so I I am working on my review. I think I'm I'm. I think I'm close to having it done, but I, I'm really enjoying this one. I, I I really think if you if you're a fan of Super Metroid, if you're a fan of like if you played the Mummy Demastered, and uh, this and this a, a few other reviews I saw that 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 I was checking out, they basically said this is like uh, if Super Metroid and the Binding of Isaac uh, had a baby, <laughs> and this is this is what you'd get a uh, a robot named Fight. So so pretty good stuff. Um, I pl- real quick. What, um, I'm sorry, but what what is it that carries over? Like normally in a rogue, like you are making progress in some way, so that the next time you play, when you go through again, you have some sort of thing that carries over, either shortcuts or uh, new power ups or more health. So, d- just to be completely honest, I I thought there were some like. I think what happens is like you unlock stuff that then you can then get and use in your next playthrough. So it's not that you have it when you start, but there were a few different items I, I would grab and it would say this will be available in your next in your next playthrough. So it, then it might okay. generate levels that would give you, you know, double like you need to be able to double jump. So you're going to find double jump somewhere within the area that you mm-hmm. um, that you have available to you. Um, I That's haven't exactly right. Is, is that what it is? Okay. I, I was, I was a little bit confused cause I, I thought that was the case. And then I tried looking through to see like, okay, what have I unlocked and how do I just gain it? But it, it actually isn't something you have when you start. It's just that you might get a level that then has that power up available to you. And some of those things are unlocked by like killing a hundred enemies does this or finding the caves does this. And then it, that unlocks and then you can use it when you start again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that. Go ahead. I was just saying. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and so it it makes it it's that that carrot on a stick, you know, to kind of to kind of keep playing. So, um, the next one I played was the Way Remastered. Did uh, RJS? Did you play this one at all? Uh, I did. I've done my first look video on it. Um, and it's really a very interesting game. Uh, you know, when the developer had, had uh, sent me an email and I, I looked at the, uh, the image that they sent me and I immediately I said, ooh, a side scroller with guns, sign me up. And I, you know, I sent that back and they said, well, here's your code, um, but don't expect the guns. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll check it out. And what I really, I guess how I would compare this game I guess I would describe it as a point and click adventure without the point and the click, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Um, you're just kind of, it's, it's a more of a puzzle game and I found it to be really fun. Um, but do you know if it's been patched yet, Josh? 
I, I the patch is in the works. So the yeah. and we talked about it on here a few episodes back where you've got to beat the you have to beat the second boss or the second level boss in under two minutes and fifty seconds or something like that, or you will get a uh, a terrible bug that will uh, it'll erase your game. It'll erase your game. <laughs> so so and, I stopped playing because of that. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Super Nintendo. Did you see this game at all? No, I haven't seen it. But the way uh, RJS just described it, it almost sounds like uh, out of this world. That's yeah, yeah, very, very good description of it. Yeah, that's that's how I hear a lot of uh, a few different reviewers comparing it to that. So Which I was is coming to the Switch. Oh, by the way. awesome! Very cool. I I was <laughs> very impressed by the way remastered. I you know I'm I'm kind of a a run and gun gamer a lot of times like i tried to play attack on titan 2 and i was like if i have to read any more of this i'm just gonna go get a book you know like just let me let me blow stuff up i found myself like totally drawn into the puzzles of the way remastered and and just getting through that first sequence and the story is actually really good and it's there's there's not a ton of dialogue there's a little bit of dialogue and it uh it, it it's pretty enjoyable so if 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 you want something to just kind of relax to and try to figure out puzzles it's it's really a game worth checking out what i'm going to touch on just real quick is called uh bouncing bob it's either on the way to uh to the switch or it's already out i have i don't remember and i it's you literally hit one button to jump and bounce to try to jump on zombies I did not have any fun with this game whatsoever. I don't know. I did watch some other videos of people that seemed like they kind of enjoyed it. It definitely was not for me. And uh, I will have a I will have a full review that you guys can check out ahead of time. But it literally is just one button. Did either of you guys see this game, Bouncing Bouncing Bob? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. It. I. Uh, I mean. You know, watch my videos if you're like, oh, this I, uh, this looks good. Hey, cool, go for it. Definitely not, definitely not for me. So, um, the last one I played for just a little bit today was Lightfall, and wow, I can't but like when they finally introduced the sprint button to this game, and I was just running and and jumping and and just flying through levels. I was like, this is this is a blast. Have uh, Super Nintendo? Have you seen this one? I. I saw some videos of it, but I haven't played it yet. RJS, have you have you had a chance with this one yet? Uh, honestly, I had never heard of it before, so I am looking at a video of it right. Oh no, I have heard of this before. Didn't they show this off at the uh, Nindies? Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize that this was out already, so I haven't played it. What, what do you think of it, Josh? I, I've I've played it for literally fifteen minutes and loved it. Absolutely loved it. Like it really has the, you, you, did you guys play a lot of Celeste at all where you kind of, you know, you can kind of double jump or jump off walls and that kind of stuff that has this to yeah. it, but it's not, I don't think it's at the difficulty level of Celeste. Cause I know that kind of, that kind of turns some people off. The thing with this is you, you jump and when you think you would hit a double jump, it actually puts a platform underneath you and then you jump again. But you can actually hold your trigger down and just literally fly. Like I was going so fast through the level and you're trying to dodge stuff that could be smashing you and that kind of stuff. I was really impressed. Really impressed. I can't wait to, to dig into this one more. And this is uh, uh, Lightfall. And I have another game and I can't remember the name of it because it's kind of hard to say. It starts with an N. It's like I, I can't remember. It, it. I think it's coming out this week. But those will be the two games for the uh, first look Fridays on uh, this week. So um, you guys will be able to check those out. But Lightfall is really, really great, really great, and uh, um, I, yeah, I'm I'm really liking it. So uh, I think that's it, guys. We did it. We did it. We're right at our we're right at our hour. Real mark. quick, I got yeah. Well, yeah. Real quick, once again, cutting you off. You're good, I, man. <laughs> got um. I played on the PS4, but it's coming to the Switch. The uh, the demo for Pixel Junk Monsters Two. Okay. Um, a big tower defense game. You kind of you run around as this little guy, and um, there's like a trail that these monsters are coming, and you got to save these little baby. Uh, 
villagers. And so what you do is you run around in third person or overhead and then go to the trees and then along the path and you kind of build different uh, towers that take down the enemies. And uh, it kind of looks like uh, almost like claymation style. And uh, the first game was really good. It came out on, I believe, the PS3 and PSP back in the day. And now uh, this one is coming out to everything. So it uh, the demo was supposed to come out, but they said there was a problem with it. So they said it might be coming out either this week or next uh, on the Switch. And uh, But yeah, that that's a really good game that I think everyone should check out. Very cool. Very cool. Say the name of that one one more time. It's uh, Pixel Junk Monsters 2. Okay, Pixel Junk Monsters 2. All right, sounds good, man. Sounds good. Well, hey, we have an eShop gift card to give away. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do a ten dollar gift card right now. So, everybody that wants to be entered to win, go ahead and type the words eShop in the chat right now. Everybody that's here live, eShop. Type the words eShop. Do they have to do an exclamation point? Nope. Just the word oh. eShop. That's it. Here we go. We're seeing people entered now. Excellent. Excellent. Do a few more. <laughs> Super Nintendo, I see your name. Yeah, I saw there. that. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. love it. All right, just a couple more, a couple more seconds here. I see. So far, eighteen people have entered. That's seven people that haven't uh, haven't entered yet. People are typing ebook. Nice RJS iMac. Perfect. <laughs> All right, guys, we have 20 people entered. Anyone else? Anyone else? Enter quick. Just type the word eShop. You just got to do it once. eShop. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Nightcrawler. You are the winner. Congratulations. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll do one more $10 eShop. Here we go. Here we go. All right, Van. Vantakuru. There you go. All right. Awesome. So congrats, guys. We will uh, just whisper me and I'll get you those uh, get you those eShop cards after the stream is over here, after the show's over. So with that, RJS, tell everybody where they can find you well you can find me at twitter twitch and youtube uh under run jump stomp and uh, you can find my podcast nintendo switchcraft uh wherever you download podcasts you know you can do it on spotify or apple podcasts or whatever android platform uh google play that you want uh and the, again it's called nintendo switchcraft all right. Very and, good. Uh, don't forget to check out runjumpstomp.com. There you go. There you go. He puts out good stuff. A lot like a lot of shows each week. So so check them out. Check them out. Super Nintendo Dad, where can we find you, bud? I mean, it's Super Nintendo Dad on Twitch and Twitter. And um, you can find me at the movie theater in about a half hour when I go see Avengers. Um, right. if you're in the area. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Guys, remember, you're going to follow uh, Eric. Hate Zero, your hero, your boy. Oh, it's... I thought we'd get through a whole episode <laughs> about that. Like, he, for those of you that don't know, who were not in the Discord, Eric, he requested that either I or Super Nintendo say that, and I said, no, that will not be happening. And Josh folded like a cheap suit. Sorry. Let it be noted. Josh Foltz. It was my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> so you guys can follow him on Twitter at hate zero. Remember, we're doing a Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze giveaway this Thursday. Show starting at six. Come hang out. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at n64 Josh. All of the social media guys n64 Josh. I got the Smash Bros cast. You can check that out on iTunes, Google Play. If you want to get yourself a free book, go to audibletrial.com slash npc. The chair I'm sitting in from OPC, go to opc.com, use coupon code N64Josh. I do have a Patreon. We have a Q&A podcast coming out this weekend. For just a dollar, you can get a hold of that. And that's patreon.com slash N64Josh. Come into our Discord. Come and hang out. It's a good time. We talk Nintendo games. We, 
we razz each other. We we talk about how Labo is game of the year, and and Pudding really uh, really believes that Labo is game of the year. So I'm gonna hear about this later, and uh, it's n64josh.com/discord. Come hang out, guys. If you're enjoying this show, hit us up on iTunes. Leave a review. I'd really, really appreciate that. We're still trying to level up. We're stuck at 4.5, trying to, uh, trying to hit, uh, trying to hit five. Oh, and Nightcrawler reminded me he is the the co-host of the Smash Bros. Cast. We're doing it live Thursday nights, 10 p.m. Pacific. So it's like 1 a.m. Eastern for all you night owls. <laughs> Holy cow. I just saw RJS's eyes get to be the size of plates. So um, come hang out, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you Thursday. Have a good one. Later.